this is how I feel about the Boston Celtics. As great as they are and as great as this duo has been since they've been the, you know, the, the young guns together, it is win or blow it up mode. I'm done with the excuses. Kyrie Irving was the scapegoat, you know, the, the time they were all together when they were young, and they proved they played good without him. They've, they've been really good without him, actually. I, I'll say they are a good duo. They are a top-tier talent together. But if you blow this this season where you're the best team in the NBA at the moment, you're the overall number one record in the NBA. You were the number one team or number two team in the Eastern Conference last year, and you blew it against the Miami, who was a, who was a playing team, and you can't win this year. I hate to say it. It's time to separate one of them. I don't care who you pick, if it's Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. Someone has to go. Something has to give. You can't just sit here and be like, I'm okay with the Eastern Conference Finals. All about the Balls Podcast. With Mark Davis, Jake Winnikine, and Alan Tama. Stella. We are back in the sack house with all about the boss podcast. I'm Mark Davis, joined alongside my partner in crime tonight, Jake Winnikine. And before we do any introductions, I know if you're watching out there on YouTube, you guys are thinking, man, what a new setup that the boys have going on right now. And yes, we do have a brand new setup. That's right. We moved on from our friends at Riverside. We want to give them a big thank you as they helped us in our almost first full year of this wonderful show. But now we moved on to StreamYard which now we can go live on YouTube. That will be the plan. We're going to do an episode for the mock draft that we're going to have, our, our only mock draft of our 1 through 32, but our own. And then we're also going to go live for the draft watch along and possibly, probably before those as well, just to kind of get a feel for it, just to see how we do. But yes, we have a ticker now. We have our social handles there. Jake's got the rock and the Yamamoto 45 ERA because yes, we're going to dive into that today. And then of course, myself and Jake run at the sack house on Twitter at Instagram, at TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everything. You will see that as the ticker is, is strolling through there. Sorry, I had the wrong one out there. It's our first night here, so just give us a chance. But before we do anything, Jake, how are you doing tonight? Ah, doing good. Glad to be back in the sack house, ready to talk some uh, sports. Uh, definitely was, was not feeling good the last few days, but I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Tonight we're going to talk something that we haven't done probably in close to a year since we first started, and that's talk all three sports balls that you see in our logo right there. You see a football, you see a baseball, and you see a basketball in the top right corner. And tonight we're talking all three. That's right. We're going to talk the Boston Celtics. We're going to talk the play-in tournament. We're going to talk the New York Jets, Caleb Williams. The Dodgers and Padres just started in Seoul. They started the, the MLB uh, season, and yes, the tush push, but Jake – Let's start us off. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm doing great. The Texas Longhorns just advanced over Colorado State in March Madness. So now we're going to the round of 32 to play the winner of the Tennessee game. So that plays tonight. But by the time you guys hear this, you guys will know who Texas plays. So hook them horns. We're one step closer to not winning the national championship this year in college basketball. No way we're winning, but we did win a game. I'm good with that. <laughs> and good luck to your Gators too, Jake, because you guys have a decent little uh, side over there. I saw the little region out there. You guys have a decent Oh, yeah, little... for sure. A lot of people have you guys actually going to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight. You guys, they have y'all as a potential little sleeper team. I think we could sneak in there. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm not picking us to win at all, but I, I think we could do a little damage this year. I went Houston. That was my that was my pick this year. I went Houston for my national championship game. I feel like they'll bounce back from that Big 12 embarrassment championship game they had. So that's where I went this year for the March Madness. I don't watch much. I had the casual pick. I got UConn. The, the most elite team, which they'll probably get upset early, obviously, but yeah. I got the I got the easy pick. And they have the hardest region, in my opinion. You have, like, three conference championship winners, and, like, you're the one seed. I, I just <laughs> yeah. You're the overall one seed. Like, you're not just the one seed. You're the overall one seed. That's yeah. a tough draw. Absolutely. But let's move on. Let's, let's talk what we're going to start here. The Boston Celtics, Jake, you know, something that me and a buddy of mine – we were talking about on Facebook, and you know, we're it's been five years. Can you believe it? it's been five years since Kyrie Irving has not been a member of the Boston Celtics? When I say five years, that means five seasons. This is the fifth season, and the first year they were third place in the Eastern Conference. They went, they made the ECF, they were seventh the year after that. They made they won the conference title when they were the second place team, lost to your Warriors in six games. Mm -hmm. And last year, or last year, they were second in the Eastern Conference, and then they lost 
in seven games of the Miami Heat. Yes, so that's that's the thing is they have one of the better duos. Like I'm not going to deny in the regular season, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they're one of the better duos. And that's the question is, is this, this seems to be the best chance the Boston Celtics are going to win with the two of them. Now they're on the third head coach too, so that's big as well. Is it time for Boston to move on if the Boston Celtics – well, move on, I say move on, move on from them to separate whoever you want to and just cut your losses, get some something in return for one of them, and just blow it up if they can't win the finals this year? Yeah, see, uh, it's a tough one because me personally, I'm saying absolutely something's got to give. You know, it's time. Um, like I gave them one more year after they lost to the Warriors and they choked it away, and then I feel like if this, they don't win here, you absolutely need to break it up. But thinking, you know, realistically, they just paid Brown. They got Brown's contract kicks in next year. They just paid Tatum. The year after that, his Supermax kicks in. So in, in all honesty, this there's a two-year window coming up before those two contracts kick in. And I feel like that's going to be the make or break. You know, all of us on the outside, I feel like if they choke this year, they're, they're done. It needs to break up. But in all honesty, I think – that two-year window starts after this season before those two big contracts kick in. But like I said, it could they lose, they could trade one of them, absolutely. This is how I feel about the Boston Celtics. As great as they are and as great as this duo has been since they've been the, you know, the, the young guns together, it is win or blow it up mode. I'm done with the excuses. Kyrie Irving was the scapegoat, you know, the, the time they were all together when they were young, and they proved they played good without him. They've, they've been really good without him, actually. I, I'll say they are a good duo. They are a top-tier talent together. But if you blow this this season where well, you're the best team in the NBA at the moment, you're the overall number one record in the NBA, you were the number one team or number two team in the Eastern Conference last year, and you blew it against the Miami, who was a, who was a playing team, and you can't win this year, I hate to say it, it's time to separate one of them. I don't care who you pick, if it's Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. Someone has to go. Something has to give. You can't just sit here and be like, I'm okay with the Eastern Conference Finals, and I'm okay with – I get it. Maybe if you win seven games, keep them. Or if you get to like six or seven games in the Finals, maybe keep them. But I just think if you don't accept the fact that they can't win, you're, you're just accepting mediocrity. And that's not the Boston Celtics history. They don't accept mediocrity. It's time to win or it's time to move on. Absolutely. I, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I think it's, it's win now you're the overall favorite. You only got 14 losses. You got seven to the West, seven to the East. Like you're literally the best team in the league. There's no excuses. I mean, the only issue with them is, yeah, like you said, regular season lights out, you know, that they're balling, but come playoff time, Jason Tatum in the clutch is horrible. He doesn't show up ever. So, I mean, if that happens again, absolutely. I think, I think one of them's got to go. And that's my problem is that uh, you know I get it you you compare you're compared to Co somehow you get compared to Kobe Bryant and I, somehow I, yeah. I, I just don't get it like I I you know I don't know if you're if you're Jason Kobe Bean Bryant Tatum I want to see it I'm not saying be Kobe but you have to fucking put the team on your back you have to like and, and he's had moments in the playoffs it's not that like he's had great games I know when they lost to the Nets he had a great series but then he also had a couple bad games against uh, the, the Nets too always always. He's a hitter. He's, he's a roller coaster. You, you get your highs yep. and then you get your lows. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to see it. I mean, I don't, I don't even hate Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown. I, I, I like, I like them. I don't like Boston, but I, I, I like them as a duo. Like they are good. Jalen Brown has his moments too. It's not just Tatum, Jason Tatum. Jaylen oh, for Brown, sure. Yeah. He gets, he gets uh covered because Tatum is the superstar on the team that he gets, he has bad ball handling. He's sometimes off the dribble. He's not good in the playoffs. So it's, I want to see something out of Brown too. It's not just Tatum on my after. Well, I want to see they both, both have good. They both have ghost moments. It's it's not one or the other. Like both have those games where they don't show up. Um, sometimes it happens in the same game, but both have those games and there's no excuses. Like it's, it's now you're clearly the best team. It, it's win now. Yeah. And they have a good defense too, even though they, they moved on from the coach last year after his scandal um, this defense has been pretty good, and the offense is the offense. I mean, like I said, and you have Porzingis there who's playing. If he's now, I get it. If barring any injuries, if injuries happen, oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But if you're healthy, I, like you like you have been, there's no excuses. Yeah, I mean, the only only thing is, I I mean, for finals, absolutely. But I believe they they were swept by Denver this year. I mean, yeah, we all. I mean, Nuggets are elite. Obviously, we've been saying that you know over and over, but. There's no excuse for them to at least make it to the finals. And, you know, if Denver beats them, I guess it's a little bit different. But they cannot lose 
before the finals. Absolutely not. And I, and I still feel if you get swept or you get a gentleman swept, I, oh. I, I hate to say it too. Like I, I can maybe see six, six games, you maybe safe seven, definitely being safe if you're playing that, that team tough. But if you get gentlemen swept or worse, like I, I, I hate to say it, like you're just not meant to be a champion duo in Boston and Boston, you know how they are. I mean, they're one of the, they're, they're one of the most loyal, one of the most the toughest fan bases in all sports. That goes from hockey, baseball, basketball, even football. Now they understand it's going to be a little struggle for football now, but they still have that expectations of we're one of the better sports cities in America. We need to win. So. Yeah. They, I mean, it's the same with LA. Boston, LA, you think elite, you think Boston and LA. I mean, they got uh, oh, championship, championship, championship. So that's the standard for those those teams. But I mean, like you said, like the fans are loyal. I can't stand Boston. I can't stand the fans. Nothing to do with any of them, but they are loyal to their teams. Um, but yeah, they get swept. That's absolutely embarrassing. And I would just clean house. Absolutely. And all, and all eyes are on them, too. Like I said, I think they have the most pressure going into oh, yeah. to the playoffs. They're the clear, all, clear-cut favorite. Yep. So out of all 20 teams, they have the most pressure to win this year. They honestly do. And, and ho- I mean, I'm not saying hopefully they win it. I mean, I was hell up Miami to win. No, but hell no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say hopefully they win. I'm trying, to be, I'm trying to be non-biased here, but my bias is going to kick in. I don't want them to win, but it's not because I, you know, I don't believe them. I just, I just don't want them to win. But I want to see something out of them, like, you know, as a fan of basketball and sports. I want to see, I want to see it's because NBA is good when Boston's good. Let's just be honest. The NBA is good when Boston is good. It's just, it's the way it works. You know, you, like you said, LA, Boston, the NBA runs through those two teams. So, um, Oh, help. I, sh- runs through I sure would hate to see both of them get swept in the first oh, round. Yeah. Though. Eh. Me too. But <laughs> speaking of, uh, speaking of the Lakers, you know, you, you mentioned the Lakers and, they are right now part of the NBA play-in tournament style. And, you know, when it first came out, I know me and you, we we ripped the play-in tournament. Like saying, you know, how soft are the league? I get it for COVID. Same thing with baseball. It was good to expand it because of the COVID year. But you adopted it. You have, you're allowing two-thirds of the league. 20 teams of the 30 are going to be in there. And this year it seems like, okay, for the West Coast, it's worth it because you have – you have teams, you know, the 10th the, the best team is the Warriors, and they're a winning record. But then you have the Rockets, who are a couple games under 500, who are mm. creeping. And we're going to talk about them, that they're creeping. But the East Coast, that's the part where I don't like is you have teams like, you know, 9 and 10 and where they just don't belong. And, and I hate if you can't be a top eight team in the, in the NBA playoffs for either side, I just don't – I still don't believe in it. I don't like it. But for the West Coast this year, I'm, I'm excited because of the how much loaded the West Coast seems to be this year. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I still, like I said, look, I still hate the play-in tournament. Um, we do have some good matchups potentially in the West right now, which you know I would, I would love a Lakers Warriors play in like that would be amazing. Uh, LeBron and Steph going at it, but I just feel like those teams down there nine and ten, they they didn't make it. They shouldn't even have a chance to be in the the playoffs. Like especially the East, like you said, we're allowing scrubs to be in there, and then one of these scrubs is going to win a play-in game. And then they're gonna, we're going to have to watch a, a first-round series with that scrub again. Like, nobody wants to see that. Like, it, it, it's just not good. If you can't be the, the top like it's always been, you shouldn't be in the playoffs. Yeah, it's like it's I was just, listening – I was listening to the first take the other day, and this is what kind of brought it up. That's why I wrote it down was they were talking about, like, oh, like, you know, the playoffs potentially have to play and cannot have, like, LeBron or Steph or Luka and Kyrie or even Kevin Durant. And they're like, man, that that sucks for the NBA. And I'm thinking, no, if you're that good, if you're, I get it, you're all those are all time greats. But if you're that good this year, you should be a top eight team. I don't give a shit if the ratings are going to be down. If you weren't a top eight team, maybe you just didn't deserve it. I get it. This seems to be like a participation. Same with baseball. I'm kind of getting like baseball expanded to what the it's like what six six teams in each side now on the top two get a bye week or or a a bye or whatever. Yeah, I just don't like that neither. It's just it's just too much. You're allowing. It's like the NFL. I get it. they moved to fourteen, and I guess in football it's different because it's it's truly one game. And I still yeah. didn't like the seventh team, but that made the home that made the home field more meaningful in the regular season because you only get one by team. One but for by, basketball, yeah. it's just I don't want to watch a team maybe get gentlemen swept here. And you know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah, there's upsets. Yeah, stuff happens. Yeah, you know what, uh, the Warriors back in the day, beat the Mavericks. They were the one seed, you know, stuff like there's, there's 
crazy stuff that happens, but most of the time it's just a terrible game. And like like you said, no one wants to see the playoffs with without Durant or LeBron or Steph. But then be better. You're, you're expected to be better. You're supposed to be the best teams in the league. You shouldn't be down there in a play-in tournament. Like it shouldn't be there. It's garbage. And no, would I hate my Warriors? I would hate for my Warriors to be eliminated, absolutely. But they don't deserve it. You suck ass. You're the 10th seed. That's your fault. It, it, it is it is cool, though, for teams like Houston, which is what I know you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, for like, a cool for, up-and-coming team, yeah. For for a team that's young, you know, they, they have these kids here that no one really expected the Rockets to be here. And they're only a couple games out, like I, I want to say, like five through eight, they're three and a half games separating those seeds. And then nine through 12, same thing it's or nine through 11 it's the same thing three and a half games separate them and it's good for like people to get exposure on the houston rockets because i guarantee you, people aren't watching houston unless you're a fan of the rockets or that team his your team is playing the rockets that's just the way it goes unfortunately but they're only a couple games back and you know they're on a six game winning streak the second biggest winning streak just behind boston they're eight two in the last 10 games they are creeping for the west coast now i don't believe they're going to win anything special but Maybe they win a play in game and then they're going to be no worse than the eight seed. And then, yeah, well, you know, it's something to be something worth watching. Absolutely. I mean, like you said, they're, they got the best record of the month right now at eight and one. Um, and they just got a bunch of, bunch of young guys. I mean, they're, their best players hurt right now. High ankle. They're saying, you know, if they did make that play in game, potentially Singun could play. Um, but yeah, I mean, Singun was 21 and nine. Jalen Green averaging 19 points, Brian Fleet 16, Jabari Smith 13, Dylan Brooks 12, Whitmore 12, just a bunch of guys balling. Um, two and a half games behind the Warriors. They still play one game against the Warriors, and the Warriors have been dropping games they shouldn't. I mean, we just got blown out to the Knicks without OG. OG didn't even play, and the Knicks blew us out. So, I mean, I would not hold that two and a half game lead too high over the Warriors because the Rockets can do it. And the Warriors have a tough schedule overall remaining. The Rockets have a tough April. They have a couple games in March as well, but March is almost over. But it's it's a chance where Houston can do something, and then maybe they play maybe they play LA tough if LA is the is the nine seed. And then yeah. if you beat the if you beat the nine seed, then obviously the well, nine plays ten, and then they play the loser of seven eight. And then you never know. I mean, you just never know. It's good. I, I think the playing's good for that. It's all, like this year is the rarity because the West is so loaded. Like, I mean, it's yeah. usually loaded compared to these, but these this amount of team with winning records or right there around 500. Like it's, it's a rarity to see that with 11 team deep and the each side. So I, I, I like it for this year, but I'm still not a fan of just handing out playoff spots for two thirds of the league. That's just, it's just too much for me. Yeah. I mean, we like it this year. Yeah. Because all the stars, are in it. They're all in the play in the tournament in the West. I'm like every year it's not going to be that, but right now you got all you got LeBron yeah. and Steph and everybody down there. So obviously the NBA NBA's loving it. Fans are loving it. But on a normal year it's teams that don't belong. So yeah, I mean we'll take it this year in the West, but overall still I don't I'm not a play in guy. And I want to say Ant Man is playing Anthony Edwards is playing hot. I know that they, they lost Cat and they, they lost Cat and we were kind of discounting they were going to be done. Or we were counting they were going to be done and He's he's put the team on his back. He is looking like one of the best players in the league, which obviously, obviously he is. But Minnesota might still hang around. You know, I wouldn't say count him out. Yeah, Denver's still the favorite, but I wouldn't count out Ant or Minnesota right now. I wouldn't either. And I completely, I completely wrote them off as soon as, as soon as he got hurt. But uh, Anthony Edwards is balling, and I did, I did see that uh, if he makes an All Pro, he, his contract does turn to a super max. So I mean, he is playing. He is playing for some money. Um, he's balling though, and I and I read uh, Cat could be back for the playoffs. I saw he posted Ooh. a little. He posted a cool little Dragon Ball meme, like uh, loading, like because uh, someone said uh, he could return for playoffs, and he posted that. So, so I wouldn't count I mean, him out now. And I and I know people are getting high on him. Dallas Mavericks too. I want to. I mean, let's super, talk super heavily. But that that win over the Denver Nuggets, Kyrie Irving, crazy yeah. sky hook <laughs> with his left. But if they play that way, the defense has been kind of spotty at times. That it could be. I mean, I I like what they're doing. Like I, I think that they can maybe make a, a a little like noise. I mean, honestly, like you have Luca and Kyrie. Kyrie's got some clutch genes in him. We know what Kyrie's about. I mean, you know, oh, especially fun. what he's about. But yeah. Luca, Luca's still Luca. He's still creative. He still gets everyone involved. He's he's a good distributor with the ball. I, I'm telling you, the Mavericks are a team. 
you just don't want to play because they're going to light the score up. It's just can they play defense? Yeah, that's the thing with the Mavericks. They're gonna they're gonna run and gun at you all game, all game, all game. You're gonna have to score 130 points to beat them. Um, just the thing is, them doing that for a seven game series, it just depends who they're playing, like who they match up with. Cause that they'll have a chance, but yeah, that, I mean that that hook shot by Kyrie over Joe Kick was just nasty. And it was great nasty. defense too. Uh, I oh, mean, it was right just, yeah. And it's Ramadan, so he hadn't ate or drank anything all day. Kyrie. Well, they've been they've been they so apparently I saw that like they've uh, the training staff and like we the cooks they yeah they have like a personal mm-hmm. chef for like but he can't eat Rama, until nighttime. Yeah. Yep, because so he like during yeah during like moon hour or like you know like, yep. when it's dark. Dude, I, I would hate to do that. Like, I, I couldn't oh, do that. Playing a game, general. Playing, playing 40 minutes in a game after you have an eight or drink all day? Oh, there's no way I'd pass out. Yeah, I could. I, was, I respect the I, people in the Middle East, too. Like, when I was out there for deployment, like, people that are doing Ramadan season out there, like, 120 degrees. I mean, their, their body's accustomed to it and they're used to it, but still, like. But still, damn, yeah. I couldn't do that. Especially, like, the Rock. workers that, yeah, the people that are doing construction and all that. Like, God bless you, but. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's the NBA, and. Something that, you know, we haven't had a chance to talk about much in here, and that's the Major League Baseball Association. Yes, the MLB. It came back just for a quick two-day stint, well, two-morning stint for us out there on the East Coast. And really, I feel bad for the Dodgers and Padre fans because you got to be up 3, 3.05 to watch the game in the morning. And the Dodgers, the Dodgers and the Padres, they were in Seoul, South, Car- South Korea. They split the series uh, 1-1. Uh, the row team, the row team won both games, and game one, the Padres did what the Padres did last year, blow games close at the end, and the Dodgers did what they did best last year. One of the best teams to do it, score runs in the eighth inning and beyond. And uh, unfortunate mishap with CJ Cronworth with that, you know, the web that kind of got exploded on a really a soft ground ball, maybe could have been a double play, got out of the inning, but um, unfortunate that happened there. Uh, the Dodgers, did, the Dodgers took that game with Jake. Your your little tag right there says it. Yamamoto gave up five runs in the first inning, and they yanked them after the inning. So he had a 45 ERA after day one of his season, and he had over eight ERA in spring training, which I didn't get in spring training, but still you don't have an ERA of eight in spring training. So that's 53 ERA, in my opinion, in the, in the month of two different times of the season. So how worried should the Dodgers be with this $300 million pitcher that they just got from Japan? I think I would be – I'd be absolutely worried right now. Um, everyone's going to say, be calm. It's, you know, it's a game. But from what I've seen, spring training, seeing this game, he's getting lit up. His fastball looks easily hittable. Um, obviously, he has some nasty pitches that he, you know, he throws in there. He's got a nasty splitter. Um, like uh, in the spring classics, I think he had 11 strikeouts. Seven of them was his splitter. So that splitter is his pitch. I mean, it's nasty. But – Fastball is easily hittable. I, I don't know. $325 million. This dude better be uh, more than just one pitch. Well, that's what I was going to say. A lot, a lot of the Japanese pitchers besides Shohei Otani, he, he's got a good live fastball. But like Dice K, for example, and and Tanaka from the Yankees, so like you know, Red Sox, Yankees right there. Uh-huh. Both of their guys, like great breaking balls, great off-speed pitches, but the fastball is flat, and they're throwing like low 90s, and – in an era where it's 99 to 101 nowadays, it's it's not the same. Like, that would have been great maybe back in, like, the early 2000s. But nowadays, you got to have guys with live arms. And I, 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 I'm I kind of on that fence where stay, stay calm. It's one game because, I mean, it could have just been a bad month. It, it could have been a bad – like, some guys start off, like, hot. like Or cold, for example, like Alex Rodriguez back when he was a Yankee. He started off cold every, every April. And now – when May came around, he got hot. Now let's see what this ki- this guy's going to do. But yeah, it's not looking good for, for Yamanota, and it's just I, it's the Dodgers. So I mean, like they find ways to win games. They're going to get Bueller back, They're, but we'll we'll see what Yamanota does. But five runs in the first to the Padres, to a division rival, a team that some people were actually high on this year. It's it's not a good look. It wasn't in your home stadium. It was in South Korea. We'll see when they're back in the the states. But still, that's a bad look. Oh, absolutely a bad look. And it was the it was the worst debut debut by a Dodgers pitcher ever. So I mean you really, really, really hate to see it for Dodgers. Like I I'm just devastated over here. <laughs> but um I I really I mean they really they bought 
that entire roster this year. That that roster is absolutely loaded, um, and I just want to see it crash and burn so bad. Well, some a lot of experts are still kind of like low on like the bottom half of the batting order. Now, I, I still think the batting the bottom of the order can make some noise. Depends on um, what what uh, Will Smith's going to do. They still have Hayward. I'm not mm-hmm. a huge fan of him. Still, like he's he's a good outfielder. He's a good fielder. Like that's what Hayward is. He's a he's a great phenomenal fielder. He still has that. Mm-hmm. But what are the guys from like six through nine going to do? Now you have obviously your top heavy with Muncy and. Uh, Otani, Mookie Betts, who's now a shortstop. Crazy, he's gone from right field to yeah. second base shortstop in like three years span. And then uh, you have Freddie Freeman. So, like, yeah, you're top heavy as hell. One through oh, five, absolutely. yeah, you're, you're loaded. It's just what the bottom half can do. And, and I know we're going to talk with Doc hopefully this Sunday when we do our baseball, you know, debut for, you know, baseball. We're going to make our predictions, what we're looking forward to this season. But Dodgers are still Dodgers, you know. They have Kershaw, mm-hmm. they have Bueller, they're getting him back. Glass now is a glass now is not someone to sleep on. He's he's pretty good. So yeah, but sucks. It su- sucks for uh, Yamamoto day day one. Yeah, it does. And like yeah, Glass now is good when healthy. He stays healthy. Yeah. He's elite. But his thing is staying healthy. So I mean, and yeah, that bottom that bottom of the roster is looking a little sketchy. They let JD Martinez walk. He signed with the Mets today. Yep. Um. But- so yeah, I mean that it does a little little kind of weak down there. And if those stars in the top have a you know, cold streak, then it, it could be, it could be bad, but they're trying to buy a championship. So let's just hope it crashes and burn. Well, and Dodgers are in win now mode. They've been in win now mode. I, I'm in my opinion, they've been in win now mode since they had Manny Ramirez back, back in the day when they had Manny, like that's, that's the time frame that the Dodgers have been in win now mode. And they've only won one world series in this win now mode well, era really. And that was the COVID year. Yeah. They need but, a, They need a COVID year again. Yeah. They're just not, they're not a, <laughs> a good, uh, October, no, early November team. And speaking of the Dodgers, too, Shohei Otani. Cool little mm-hmm. debut for the Dodgers. He, he was good game one. Game two had a, mm-hmm. had a little bit of juice. But after game one, it was the drama, you know, and his, his former interpreter was in the dugout, and they were laughing and smiling. And for a guy that just stole $4.5 million, allegedly, from your your uh, your account and all that, which that's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying is, the 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 the, the, st- the story out there is his longtime friend, Tipperator, was in some illegal California sports betting debt, and originally Jake, his spokesman said that Otani signed off on it, and he knew about it. But then mm-hmm. later on, it got backtracked, and it said, "Oh, he never knew." So what? His signature was forged. I, I, I'm okay with gambling. It, apparently, it was soccer mainly. It wasn't baseball related. So if it's not baseball, who gives a shit? So what what what's really going on? Like what are you hiding? Like this now it seems like something's up. It seems some sketchiness is going on. What is really going on with you, Otani? Now it's the same thing with MJ. Is the MLB trying to cover up like the NBA did with his gambling? You don't want to have your top star, you know, the light fucking shine on you. Yeah. Uh, see, at first I was thinking, you know, this is this whatever. It's no story. This dude was gambling, whatever. But now it is it's kind of like hush hush. Like everything's so quiet. Like. He, his name was, was on all the documents, you know, sending the, the wire transfers. Um, then all of a sudden he doesn't know anything. Then all of a sudden it's all on his interpreter and the MLB is not going to investigate anything. I don't know. It, it It's just kind of a shady situation. Like if his, if his interpreter was gambling on soccer and, and he paid his debts, who cares? Like, it, it, I mean, if you were in trouble and you called me like, hey, bro, like I, I really need some money to get out of this debt. And I sent you the money. What's what's the big deal? Why is it such? Why is people being fired? Why is it a hush hush situation? I don't know. It, something's not right. And I feel like they're just firing him to try to get this to brush under the rug. So, so, something shady about it for sure. Yeah, and that's the situation is because gambling on soccer and your friend, like like you said, if you if you lost a million dollars and I I wired you money because I have it. What's the what's the big deal? Even if I knew like you're my manager or you're my interpreter or whatever it is, and and I, I gave you the money, who gives a shit? It's my money. I can loan exactly. Out to my but that makes it to make me think that maybe it wasn't soccer you're gambling on. Maybe it was baseball. Now the guy that runs the company that they were betting through said he knew Otani's name was on these records, and he didn't ask questions because obviously, as a bookie, you just want your money. You don't give a shit. Who it comes care. from Absolutely. and where it comes from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But four but four and a half million dollars losing 
like you get stolen from your account and you're in the you're in the dugout laughing and having a good time after you guys come back and beat the Padres. Like so that's that's another thing is like you're in the dugout playing around and, and then you watch Otani now. He looks for he looked for I mean he had no one around him. He looked frustrated. His buddy wasn't there to talk with him because he doesn't speak English. So yeah. I think there's more to it. Now we don't know. And this begs the door that this opens the door of Pete Rose. You know, if if something gets brought up, people are saying, well, you have two choices. You let Pete Rose in or you ban Shohei Otani. Absolutely. Get Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. What an absolute joke. Like this dude is one of the best hitters to ever be in baseball. We're not talking about no performance enhancing. We're not talking about anything. We're talking about a guy that bet to, to win a game. He didn't bet to say, I'm going to go 0 for 4. Like, this is it. enough is enough. Pete Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame. Like, goodness gracious. Um, and But like you said, like, Otani is Rose ignoring reporters and stuff now. So, I mean, yeah. A little, I, don't, I mean, I, little I don't blame you on that because, you know, you, your team and your management team, they're there to advise you, like to handle. That's it. yeah. You, you don't if they say, "Hey, it's best right now to hide under the the rug. Let us handle it." Now I get that. Obviously, people say if, if you're if you're innocent, why hide? Well, because people still twist and turn things around, and they make up stories, and then that might you know paint you to be the wrong in you know, the wrong image. I get that part, but I'm just kind of confused where you said Otani knew a spokesperson close to him said he knew about it. And then they retract that statement and it, it changed. So like, if it's not a big deal, why'd you change your, your story? I just don't get it at all. Oh, the That's story like, changed three, it's changed three times. Yeah. Um, and I guess when it was being investigated, his interpreter was the guy translating all the information. So <laughs> who knows what was actually brought up and what wasn't. And I, yeah, I just don't get it. And no, I didn't see them be not investigating. I must have missed that part. So if they're not investigating it, like I said, that's that's they, the time. They said word. Shohei won't be investigated, so they might be investigating the interpreter, you know. But they said Shohei is not under investigation. Nothing. And that's where it th- uh, kind of compares to what MJ happened. I know he stepped away to go play baseball, but Otani's not leaving the game. I mean, if he leaves the game, I don't think there's anything else for him, and well, not in the states at least. So the NBA apparently was covering up the, the I wasn't alive for it, but that was the reports they were covering up MJ's gambling issues. And then now Otani's situation is going on. So it's kind of like why shed light on your biggest star? Because Otani is, he's arguably the biggest star. I mean, he probably is the biggest star in baseball right now. That's just the way no, it is. Absolutely. Even though he's making $2 million. Hmm. Yeah. For the next, what, uh, <laughs> 10 years or whatever. And then he gets seven, oh, gets six, yeah. 80 after that. Only a few oh. teams can do that, and that the Dodgers, Yankees, <laughs> Red Sox. There's only, like I said, the only a few that can do it, and he's playing for one of them. So, I mean, hey, good for him. I mean, if you're going to get your money, you're going to get your money. Just and, put Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He, I, I unfortunately think he'll go in a couple years after he after passes, he passes away. away. Hey, he's in the WWE Hall of Fame. He's in a Hall of Fame. He's in the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm getting tombstoned by Kane twice on WrestleMania. WrestleMania thir- or 14 and 15, so – Kane got him in the Hall of Fame, but no, yeah, it's Pete Rose is in one hall. It's just not the right one. Yeah, for real. But so yeah, that's baseball. Like I said, we're going to start baseball talk out there, boys and girls, when you're listening. Sunday, that's where we're going to start recording with Doc, myself, and Jake. We're going to have a baseball weekly. We're going to try and find a good day. We're thinking Sunday night we record when really it's just Sunday night baseball on. There's not much to really kind of like weekend recap. We'll, we'll, if it gets exciting two times a day week, maybe we'll do that. But starting off, we're going to start off slow. Once a week, we still have basketball talk, and we still have off-season talk, especially with the draft coming up. So pay attention to MLB talk very, very shortly. And, Jake, all eyes were on USC yesterday at Kayla Williams' pro day. So everyone that's listening, it'll be two days ago. But Kayla Williams' pro day, the lights were there, all the cameras. Keenan Allen, the new Chicago Bear, was there as Kayla Williams was dropping 60, 70-yard bombs. He missed a couple overthrows on some long passes. But, hey, that's expected on, on deep passes. Sometimes your arm's a little, a little too strong for your receiver's legs. But how excited were you seeing Kayla Williams potentially the number one draft pick in this year's draft on his pro day? Hmm. Where do I begin? Um, for starters, yeah, the, he had a couple, you know, 67, 68 yard bombs. Looked pretty. But in all reality, I mean, every quarterback going into the draft is going to have some nice throws at a pro day. You're, you're standing there throwing a deep ball to your buddy. I mean, if you can't do that wide open, no pressure, you don't even belong in the NFL. 
So let's not just get too carried away with that 70 yard bomb that I've seen a hundred times already. Um, but those overthrows you coincidentally have, you never see around. Um, we're only seeing those highlights, but I, I know he's clear cut. He's going to be the number one overall pick, but I'm not on it. Uh, give me Jaden Daniels. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Caleb Williams. He's, he's too cocky for one. Like you're not even in the league yet. And you're just, Oh, you know, I don't like to run. Um, you got his dad out here demanding, or, you know, demanding he wants to own part of a team. He's asking if there's a way for him not to sign a rookie contract so he can just sign a massive deal. Like the dude thinks he's Tom Brady already. He hasn't even touched foot in the league. I'm not sold. And I, I, I mean, you guys can think what you want, but I think he's not going to be worth that number one pick. Give me Jaden Daniels any day, every day. Um, his numbers matched. His numbers were better than Caleb Williams this year. I mean, Caleb, Caleb Williams had a better year last year. Um, but Jaden Williams, what, what do you have, like a 95, 96 QBR, well, number one? Well, they're both la- they're both two last Heisman winning uh, yeah. players in college. And, yeah. and Jane Daniels didn't have a bad year the year that Caleb won the, the no. Heisman. It just wasn't as good as Caleb. I mean, it's just unfortunate. And Caleb didn't have a bad year last year. His numbers got – they yeah, they got brought down. But brought down a lot. You did lose Jordan Addison. People, uh, I will give him a pass. I mean, yeah, you had Brandon Rice. But you did lose Jordan Addison. Like, that's, that's still big, too. Like, Jordan Addison was – a first round receiver. He stepped it up when uh, Josh Jefferson got hurt. And, and you're mentioning like, you know, some of the things Jake coming in the league, Jalen Johnson came out and said, you can't bring that Hollywood stuff into the building. You got to prove yourself. Now that's not a shot at Caleb Williams. He's just saying you need to leave that like ego at the door and you yeah. have to earn it. You have to earn it. And, and DJ Moore said the same thing. Like you can't worry about what Justin Fields did and what happened to him and how he got kicked out of the building trade away to the Steelers for a six round pick. You just got to do what you can handle. Like what you can bring to the table, play your game, and that's good advice for them. Now, last year, we were in the same situation. I don't think it's going to be like last year where Josh McCallum, I think he was the – I don't know if he still is. I think he's a former now – or Panthers quarterback coach. He made that comment to C.J. Stroud, like saying, hey, when we're in Carolina, we're going to do this. Now, that's what made me think that they were going to draft him and it was all smokescreen with Bryce Young. I think there's no smokescreen. I think it's going to be Caleb Williams. Now, I agree with you. Absolutely. I'd go Jay and Daniels. Now, yeah. whoever goes there is, is set up for success. You know, you have, like I said, we, we're, we're going to talk about it all offseason. We've already talked about it. You're set up for success. Chicago is finally, in my opinion, doing it the right way. Now, it's been so many years. It's finally – I told Doc, too, this is the most excited that I've been to see the Chicago Bears offense since it was led by Jay Cutler, Matt Forte, Greg Olson, and Brandon Marshall. Now, that's a good little squad, too, but not like Keenan Allen, DJ Moore – and DeAndre Swift with Cole Komet and Gerald Everett, a two tight end system. So I I, I'm, I think Caleb's going to go one. I want to slow the talk on, you know, being a Hol- Mr. Hollywood, being the, the best thing that's coming in. But, hey, we could all be wrong. I mean, it's – but I think it's not wrong that he's going to be the number one pick. And that's just oh, how it's going to be April 25th. Absolutely. He's the number one pick. I'm just saying I would take Jaden Daniels, absolutely. I mean, and – and like you were saying about the roster, I wish Doc was on right now so he could hype up his Bears because that roster is loaded. Usually when a when a quarterback's getting drafted, it's a trash situation. I mean, like you said, the Panthers, like they had no hope for last year. Like he was just absolute bomb from the beginning. But he's going into a loaded roster. You got the defense. You got Jalen Johnson locked up. You got two of the – could be the arguably the best wide receiver duo in football. Um, like, I mean, you got the roster, um, you got Cole Komet, a tight end. You still got, uh, what's the name that just traded for from Washington? Oh, oh uh, wait. Sweat or whatever his name is. Dude. Oh uh, yeah. On defense. Mo- yeah, yeah. I was thinking defense. offense. Yeah. Montez like, Sweat. Yeah. 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 I mean, they're, they're loaded. Like they got the roster. He's walking into a beautiful situation. Like I, there should be no excuses. This dude should light the league up. He's got the roster. If he's all that he says he is, I, I want to see him prove it. You know me. Like, I, I hate to call – it matter, that doesn't matter who you are in the first round. Like, I hate – especially quarterback. I hate calling you a bust in, in year one. Because year one. Because guys like Peyton Manning, you know, he led the league in receptions. And, shit, you, I, 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 I mean, I was only three years old when he got drafted. So, I could have called him a bust at that time if I was still my, my – you know, I was my age now. But – you know, you got to, like, let them build. Like, you let them get the system with them. Now, if Caleb Williams, my opinion of a bust, if he can't get to the playoffs, I want him to just get – I don't give a shit if it's wild card or it, 
the division. If he can't just get a wild card spot, year one, that to me is a failure. Like that's because, like you said, it's loaded. Now, I'm not expecting you to go win the Super Bowl or anything. I'm not even expecting you to win a playoff Absolutely. game. Just get to the playoffs mm-hmm. and show, like, hey, yeah, okay, I couldn't win a playoff game. I'm in year one. But now I have the experience and all that. So I want to see that. That's what I want to see from Caleb Williams. That's what's going to prove because, like you said, no one comes in the situation. Like Joe Burrow did. Like it, it took a year for Nobody. Joe Burrow because he, well, he got hurt. Yeah. But he had T. Higgins, but then you got Jamar Chase the year after the year that he got hurt. So Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck came into a better situation because the Colts – since they were a quarterback away, they just moved on for Peyton. You still had Reggie yeah. Wayne. You had T.Y. coming in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, the, that was just very rare, too, with him because you just moved on from Peyton. But, yeah, I want to see Caleb Williams do it. Like, if it's and, he, and he has to. Like you said, like, I, I know you're, you know, you give him a few years before you call him a bust. I'm quick on the bust. Quick. <laughs> yeah, but with, with this roster – if, if, if you don't, I mean, have a winning record, and like you said, wild card, first round, like you got to make playoffs with this roster. Um, yeah, I'll be I'll be yelling bust if, if, if he bombs with this roster, absolutely. Because, um, I mean, Purdy, the system quarterback, everyone said, oh, with that roster, oh. it, could be, it could be any quarterback. This Bears offense, I'm not saying it's on the Niners level, but this Bears offense is good. You can't make no excuses for receivers, tight ends. Like they got a roster. You got to at least make the playoffs. And speaking of that, real quick, I know we I wish Al was here too, because we're we know we argue that 2021 and 2022 class. You know what? Fuck them because the 2022 class was better because they got Brock Purdy out there and he made a goddamn Super Bowl and an NFC championship in his first two seasons. When you guys have guys in the 2021 class who are third string uh-huh. quarterbacks yeah. now, and they're all backups besides Trevor Lawrence, but he's almost out the door too, it looks like. But no, yeah, I saw that. I was like, well, yeah. Brock Purdy was a seven, he's a he's a yeah, everyone he, talks about that they leave him out of that when they show that the draft or quarterbacks from the two years, they say, you know, no one's starting but Lawrence. They're forgetting about that guy that just went to the Super Bowl at the bottom. Yep, NFC Championship his first year. Unfortunately, he got hurt. We don't know what would have happened. Yep. I know you said that. Y'all would have won, but in reality, we don't know if the Eagles would have still won that game. We don't know if the Niners would have won, but he got to the NFC Championship. So, I mean, that was the only loss of, the, of that season, too. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, goes towards him. But, yeah, all eyes are going to be on Caleb Williams. And, Jake, all eyes are on the New York Jets. I've been high on the New York Jets the second they got Aaron Rodgers in a trade. I said they were my you were. Super Bowl were. champion going into last year. Unfortunately, four poison, you have a t- Achilles tear, and that gets wiped away. I have an excuse for it, but if they are healthy, which we know MetLife Stadium, it's very bad with the field or with the injuries. If they can stay healthy with Mike Williams and Garrett Brees Wilson. Hall stays healthy, and Garrett Wilson's out there, and Rodgers, and let's just say you draft Brock Bowers because I'm having that feeling that Brock Bowers is going to Me too. <laughs> the New York Jets are going to put the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins on notice. They're going to finally, finally make the playoffs. That's right. And I'm telling you right now, they are my Super Bowl favorite going into next year. They signed two tackles, Tyron Smith. They traded for Morgan Moses, I'm sorry. And they have an elite defense still. And you're getting Aaron Rodgers back, Mr. Smooth, sailing Aaron Rodgers, one of the best deliveries of the ball. I'm telling you right now, the Jets are one of my teams, and they are a Super Bowl favorite of mine. I mean, like you said, I mean, it, I I have them going Bowers. I think that's exactly what they need. I think it's the perfect fit. I have Bowers there at their pick. I'm, I mean, that's going to be nasty. But, big but, you got Mike Williams, injury history. You got Rodgers coming off an injury. You had Brees Hall who got hurt. That MetLife Stadium with some injury-prone players lately. Um, I don't know. Can they stay healthy? They stay healthy. I'm with you. I think they could be anyone. Yeah, but if, they, if they're, if they're healthy, healthy, it's absolutely. But I mean, what, I mean, was it two seasons in a row? Mike Williams has been hurt, right? Yeah, my uh, he he's had injury history since he came into the to the league, and he I mean we've, people forget he's a former first round pick too from the Los Angeles Chargers, and mm-hmm. it's just unfortunately it just didn't work out uh, with him there. You know injuries happen and all, and MetLife is MetLife. We understand it's a shit stadium when it comes to injuries, but I'm still excited for the New York Jets. I, I don't know. I've been a believer in Aaron Rodgers. Maybe it's my bias because I'm a Pat McAfee guy, and I support his show. And you know Rodgers is one of their biggest guest weekly guest during the football season and kind of Aaron Rodgers kind of grown on me a little bit you know some stuff he's not all the stuff he says 
But some of the stuff he says, it, it's grown on me. I love the fact that he calls out shit. And even if I don't agree with it, the fact that he speaks his mind on national TV, on YouTube, <laughs> I love it. But, no, I'm, I'm excited to see Aaron Rodgers in the green this year. And hopefully the team I, – I don't want anyone to get hurt. It doesn't matter the team. I want to see them stay healthy, though, and see the potential that they can bring to this league. I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully Rodgers lasts longer than I do in the bedroom this time. God. <laughs> yeah, he, that, that was unfortunate. Monday Night Football 2 on 9-11 after he just carried the That was the terrible because it was so much hype around the Jets. We were all super excited. Like, I, I'm still excited. I want to see what the Jets can do, you know, like – um, I was happy for Rodgers to, to leave the NFC. Like I was pumped for the Jets. Um, I want to see it. I want them healthy. I want to see what the Jets can do. I hope they all stay healthy. Um, I wish they would change the turf, you know, the whole NFL. But yeah, right. But ab- absolutely, if they're healthy, I-, I hope they get Bowers. I think that can be really, really fun to watch. Um, and put some respect on Aaron Rodgers. He's the next vice president. No, his name. No, he he actually got his name got his name got removed from that. Actually, so, I know. Yeah, he, I know. Yeah, I was I was yeah, I was paying attention to it. Yeah, um, it would be awesome to see if he could be vice. I don't think that an independent's never going to win the president. Unfortunately, oh, I was uh, for, I say I say unfortunate for everything, but a vice uh, independent yeah, is knows. never going to. Yeah, I mean, it's just because independents just there normally to tear apart one or to make a try as much balance as can between both parties. But you never. Steph Curry said he might run. I'm still waiting on the Rock to run, man. <laughs> I know, right? Well, he's too busy with Roman right now and, and Cody Rose and Seth Rollins and potentially potentially ruining Co- Roman Reigns' title reign. I think that's going to happen. I think he's turning on Roman at Mania Night 2, and then it sets up Rock versus Roman, SummerSlam 2024. That's what I'm looking forward to. See if I get that prediction right. But mm-hmm. last bit of news, Jake. The tush push is saying in the NFL, I don't mind the tush push. It's the fact that the defense can't use the same leverage with their guys that, because of injuries that happened on a field goal like t- a decade ago. So I would be okay if the defense can do it too. But, and that was my pushback was if the defense can't do it, the offense shouldn't be able to do it. But I don't have a problem with the play. If you can't stop it, I mean, obviously the only the Eagles were good at it, and they, and they got stopped in the, against the Bucs in the playoff game and in the regular season. So it, it is be able to be stopped. No one else does it successful like this. So just be better, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, it's a guaranteed first down with the Eagles, but nobody else is doing it. Everyone's just complaining because it's working for the Eagles. So stop it or do it yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone's just mad because, oh, you know, Philly's going to do the tush push. Okay, figure it out. And they didn't like win the Super Bowl. Like, I mean, and, and yeah. they lost in the wild card. So who gives a shit? Like, it obviously didn't work enough for them. They just got them to the They didn't playoffs. lose anything. No, they didn't win anything. <laughs> they lost the whole second half of the season. Garbage. Yeah. And, and, and if you're that, if you're that fucking angry about it, don't let them get to fucking third and one and fourth and one. How about exactly. that? How, how about, how about play, that? Yeah. Play defense the first couple of plays and fucking don't don't let them get to the one yard to go or less. Yeah. Like that's not that fucking hard. I mean, yeah, it, it can be hard times to stop guys, but. It's that that's simple. Don't fucking let them get that close. Yeah, exactly. Or just play Kelsey, better offense. Kel, Kelsey's gone now, so we'll see if the Eagles even still do the tush push. Now, no, Barkley can. Barkley's big enough to be to push fucking hurts from behind. Um, oh yeah, that's gonna be very interesting for sure. Yeah, I'm really when, excited. I'm actually when excited Barkley, to see that. when Barkley has three touchdowns in fantasy because uh, the tush push. <laughs> did, did you see his? Uh, has them all. Did you see his his daughter? I believe it was I believe his daughter, not son. I think oh, his yeah. daughter. She's she said, "Are we? Does that mean we're finally gonna win?" I was like, "God, she just shit all over the New York Giants, all like, over the Giants." That made that that made me want to root for the Eagles a little bit, just because uh, I heard that. You know, it it, it made me want to root for the Eagles just because Saquon Barkley's daughter is a fucking savage, dude. Uh, Good for you, little little Barkley out there. Uh just fucking. Just fucking just went end, for it. And in the end in all hopes and dreams for the Giants. You're stuck with Daniel Jones and you got you got Saquon's daughter just shitting all over you. <laughs> Speaking of getting shit on, if you're still listening out there, you made it to about the 49 minute mark, 48 minute mark. I'm not sure what clip we're gonna have lead off the show. If you pick the University of Kentucky to win your championship or even just get far, jokes on you. Because they just got upset it against the University of Oakland, 
a 14 seed. I had the Kentucky Wildcats winning one game and losing in the round of 32. So if you're out there picking Kentucky and you're still trusted John Cal, yeah, Derek Jones, this is a shout out to you because you said today, best talent in the world, they could play defense. Kiss my ass. They don't have the best talent. You ain't losing Oakland if you have somewhere the top talent. I get it. Recruit wise, they're our top talent, but you ain't losing to Oakland. I, I didn't even know what this fucking mascot is. I still don't know what the mascot is. I barely knew that they had teams in Oakland still playing after the Raiders and the A's were trying to leave. Like, what the fuck are you doing, John Cal? Get it together, dude. Get it together. Jack Golke, 10 three pointers. <laughs> you should be absolutely embarrassed, Kentucky. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, I just don't get it. Like, I'm, text, I'm texting Jones right now, and I'm like, best talent in my ass. Because, like, and guess what? He chose Kentucky. We have a 25 man tournament challenge i tried getting some guys out there to play but we got 25 more more than last year and jones picked kentucky went with his biases and he chose the wildcats to be national champions shame on you Derek jones shame on you <laughs> god damn i love seeing the kentucky wildcats lose though it's it's, uh, a, it's a great feeling i love it i, I love upsets and march madness that's what we're here for give me all hey, of it yeah give me the upsets man give me the upsets all day i love it Schools have uh, no business being there beating top seeds. Yeah, and then and the shame on you, Tom Izu, for that fucking comment you made about, well, maybe we should shrink the field because no, if you can't beat these fucking Cinderella teams, Absolutely. you have no business being in the in the dance, dude. I get it. Like anyone can win it. I mean, St. Peter's was the elite eighteen a couple years ago was a fifteen seed. We had, we've had two sixteen teams beat uh one seeds in their the existence. You can't beat these guys. <laughs> I guess, I guess you weren't meant to be champions. Sound a little scared to me with those comments. Well, Michigan State hasn't been uh, – they they were good a couple years ago, but they haven't been world world beaters in quite some time. They're supposed so. to be. Oh, yeah, they are uh, blue bloods. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Villanova this year, like uh, I had a buddy ask me today. He's like, where the fuck's Villanova? I was like, dude, they weren't good this year. And they're they a blue blood too. Yeah, they, they just disappeared. Yep. So. But no, yeah, we have our true. I get like eleven seed one today, but this is the first true upset, like big, big upset. So, congrats to you, Oakland. You know, fourteen seed will be in the ground of thirty-two, and we'll see. I believe, yeah, because I, I, I had Kentucky. I had Kentucky losing quick. Like I said, I, I didn't trust what they were doing this year. So here, I had them right winning at. today, obviously, but that's probably yeah, good I, everybody. Kentucky, Kentucky, where they at? Where they at? Damn, I don't even see them on my fucking thing. Damn, who? Who? I'm trying to see who they who they would play next. That was the thing. Oh yeah, so I had them. I had them. I had them losing to NC State. I had the 11 seed beating them. So I had NC State. So now Oakland will play Texas Tech or NC State. So congrats to you, Oakland. Um, God damn, dude. But no, man, what a, what a show. Like, I, I appreciate this. It's good, man. You know, we had all three sports on here. We even talked college basketball a little bit with Kentucky's misfortunes. So, no, Jake, it was a great episode, man. And, you know, I, I know you're a little under the weather yesterday. Hopefully that little stomach bug goes away. Hopefully you enjoy the weekend. You know, like I said, still March Madness over the weekend. And for us, like for me at least, I, I, I'm going to be excited to watch that. I'll be in Florida next weekend with you and the missus for, for a wedding. So, I'll see you in a little over a week, too. You know, I know we're going to be back here Sunday, probably Wednesday, for baseball and basketball. So, yeah, I hope you have a good Hell. weekend. Hell, yeah. You too, bro. Uh, definitely excited. It was definitely a good episode. It was truly uh, all about the balls today. Like you said, we talked about a little bit of everything. Um, definitely look forward to some, some basketball, some baseball coming up. Uh, whatever you guys want to hear, we're definitely going to be talking about all the sports. Yeah, if you like I said, if you guys out there, like I said, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify, iHeart, or Apple, there's there's a ticker under there. We're gonna start the show with it. We're gonna end the show with it. Like I said, Twitter and IG at the Sack House. You can also look all about the Boss Podcast. TikTok is at the underscore Sack House because the way TikTok is, but same thing, all about the Boss Podcast. And then just follow us on everything. Jake Jake runs the Twitter for the most part. I will chime in if he gets a little busy. You see the logo right there. If you can't see it on YouTube and you're watching, listening to other stuff, like I said, it looks like, honestly, a dick with two balls. It's a football in the middle, and it's a baseball on the left, and a basketball on the right, and it's in bright neon lights saying all about the Boss Podcast. Not hard. I do want to say that Kirk Cousins video has now been seen by 22,000 individuals, 9,000-plus on TikTok. 
13,000 on Facebook. So we're getting there. We're getting there. We're trying to get you guys to some exposure. Like I said, expect some live episodes coming up too. Draft Watch Along will be live for that. Our official mock draft. We don't release these 4.0 and 5.0s. It's 1.0 from us. We don't fucking sit here and we examine every single week. We do it the week of when it's all said and done. But, Jake, hope you have a great weekend. Hope you feel better. Chris, you too. Luke, Doc, Alan, out there in training. Doc's having cert- or a procedure done tomorrow. So, Doc, good luck. Hope you, you make it out alive. We don't want you missing a Bears potential Super Bowl this year. <laughs> but I'm Mark Davis. That's Jake Winnicott. This is All About the Boss Podcast, and we are out. Thank you for checking out another episode of All About the Balls podcast. We want to thank all of our listeners and supporters of the Sack House. You can listen to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at the Sack House.